welcome to uh, a lesson on one of the last topics we need to do actually. Okay, this is called transformations of graphs. It's not ideal with some of you being at home. So hopefully if I can talk you through the rules and with plenty of practice, um, this topic isn't so bad actually. Okay, there's just a set of rules to use. Once you get your head around what's going on, not too bad at all. Okay, so if you put the date and title, it's an A-star topic, okay, it'll be right at the back of your maths paper, it's only on the maths paper. And basically, what we're going to be doing is looking at how making changes to uh, the equation of a graph, or, okay, or the function as we prefer to call it in this topic, if you change the function slightly, what effect does that have on the graph? And, and that doesn't mean sort of moving every coordinate meticulously and redrawing it, it's just a, a quite a general topic of when I do this, this is what happens. When I do that, this is what happens. Okay. So, a few notes to start with. Okay. Sometimes you'll be told the actual equation of a graph. Other times you won't. But it doesn't actually matter what the original equation is. That, that's not what's important. What's important is the changes that you make to that function and the effect that those changes have. Okay, and so what you'll see a lot of in this topic is you'll be given a graph and it'll be labelled typically y equals f of x or y equals g of x. And that means that there was an equation involving y and x, but you don't really need to know what that equation was. And so f is just stands for the word function. And it's just to represent whatever the original equation was. Okay? It might be x squared. It might be x cubed. It might be x squared plus 3x minus 2. It doesn't actually matter. And because it doesn't matter, very often you don't even know what the original equation was. You just get given this thing, y equals f of x. And then if there's two in the same question, they quite often call the second graph y equals g of x if it's different. Okay? So you'll get your head around that quite quickly. If you could just pause the video and make notes as we go along, okay? And the graphs I'm showing in this, I'll, I'll put up as a Word document so you can cut and stick rather than redrawing lots and lots of times, okay? So the, the first type of change we're going to look at is a translation. You'll hopefully remember from back in year nine, that translation is when a, a shape gets moved rather than flipped or enlarged or rotated, anything like that, okay? So this is all about moving the graph. And to start with, we're gonna be moving the graph up and down. So in the, in the Y direction, in the vertical direction, okay? So put a side heading of vertical translation, okay? And basically, you can make a graph go up and down by adding or taking away a number on the end of the function. All right, so I put plus or minus because it could be either. And that happens after the y equals f of x, then you add or subtract something on the end. So outside, after the bracket, and as you'd probably expect there, if you add a number on, the graph goes up, and if you take something away, the graph goes down. So if I show you them, and you've got a graph like this, I've printed out, I've sort of I've put a sheet of these with this lesson. So if you want to cut this one out and stick it on. So there I've got a graph. I've labeled it y equals f of x. It looks a bit like x squared, but it doesn't actually matter what it is. And this graph goes through the origin, so it goes through 0, 0. But if I wanted to draw the graph of y equals f of x plus 3, well, that means that the original graph, y equals f of x, needs to go up 3. The shape doesn't change. And you don't have to be particularly accurate about this because there's no scale anyway. So if you just sort of draw on a new graph, higher up, try and get the shape as close to the original as you can, but it doesn't need to be perfect. But we do need to say that it's gone up 3. And so what we would do in this case, and if you don't do it, you won't get all the marks, 
just need to mark on the y-axis that it now goes through 3. Remember, originally it went through 0. And that's how we can tell anyone reading our answer that it hasn't gone just up by any old amount. It's definitely gone up by 3. Likewise, then, if I want the graph to go down, so if I wanted the graph to go down here, okay, and I want it to go through minus 1, that means that the original graph has moved down 1, and to move a graph down by 1, we just take away 1 on the end. Okay, so to make a graph go up and down, you either add or subtract, and you add or subtract outside of the brackets, you just stick it on the end. That's probably the easiest transformation of a graph, okay, moving it up or down. Please remember, though, to label your axes if it crosses an axis and you know where it crosses to mark it on. Sometimes you'll be given a coordinate and you can kind of figure out what the new coordinate would be. So, for instance, if originally I have a coordinate by here and that coordinate is 4, 1, so as in across 4 and up 1, so the matching coordinate on my new graph it's still across 4, but because we've gone up 3, remember, now it would be 4, 4. So you can, you can sometimes do it with coordinates if you're asked that, okay? And then actually this one would need to go there, wouldn't it? Because if I've gone down 1, my new coordinate would be 4, 0. Because I was only on 1 to start with, and I've gone down by 1, okay? The next transformation then... I think I've got it on this slide as well. Okay. Now, so the next thing we're going to look at is horizontal translation, movement in the x direction, left and right now, not up and down. Okay. Uh, so if we make some notes, and then you can stick in another blank graph or, or just draw a new blank graph. Now, this is really important. We're still adding and taking away to go left and right, but look where the adding and taking away is happening this time. It's not stuck on the end, it's inside the bracket with the x. Now, as a rule in this topic, if you make changes inside the bracket, that's always the left and right, the horizontal x direction. If you make changes outside of the bracket, then that means you're changing it in the up and down, the y, the vertical direction. But something else weird happens when you make changes inside a bracket, okay? And you'll need to highlight this. Everything goes opposite to what your intuition would tell you. So actually, when you add inside a bracket, it doesn't go right like you'd think it would. It actually goes left. And when you take away inside a bracket, you would think that goes left, but it goes right. And that happens pretty much all the time when you make changes inside the bracket. It does the opposite to what your intuition would tell you. Okay? In the vertical direction, of course, adding went up and taking away went down. You would probably guess that. Okay? So if I show you an example of this then, so we'll start with the same blank axis, if the board will let me uncover it. I've now got a line as well. Look. Okay, so the same graph as before, y equals f of x. If I want the graph to go left, I need to add inside the bracket. So if I say I want to do y equals f of x plus 2, the graph goes left by 2. It doesn't go up, or up and down. It doesn't change in any other way apart from it moves to the left. So maybe I'm going to start it by here. I'm going to go down there and out over there. So the same graph shifted 2 to the left. Now, how can I show this time that it's gone 2 to the left? Well, originally by here, it was going, it was hitting the x-axis at 0. Well, if I've gone 2 to the left, I'm now hitting the x-axis at minus 2. So again, it's really important to mark your axis. If I want to go right, I do the opposite. So going right, I need to take away inside the bracket. So if I take away 3 inside a bracket, that will send me 3 to the right this time. 
And so instead of my graph starting by here, I'm going to start it over here. And this time it might look something like that. Okay. And then I mark my axis because I've gone three to the right. I now touch the axis at three. Now notice the height of the graph hasn't changed. Okay, the width of the graph hasn't changed. I'm trying my best to draw the same curve as I had originally, but just move it to the side. If you had tracing paper, you could do this properly, but it's not that important to get the shape right as long as you show that you know the graph has gone to the right or to the left. Remember, it's opposite to what you might think. Okay, so that's translation taken care of because you can only go up, down, left, and right. Okay. So the next thing we'll look at, and thinking of transformations in, back in year nine, so translation was one of them. Reflection is another one. Okay, so let me cover this up so it's not all on there at the same time. So to make a graph um, reflect, or to reflect a graph, okay, and we only either reflect in the x-axis or the y-axis is our mirror. If we put the minus outside of the bracket now remember outside of the bracket is to do with the up and down direction so it means the x-axis is the mirror and anything that's above the axis goes below the axis if i put the minus inside the bracket now that's a left and right reflection using the y-axis as the mirror but again it'll be much easier to just show you this. So make a little note of it, but the most important thing is that you've got one of these graphs and you label it and you draw it nicely. So if you look at my original graph here, now let's get a little bit of space. Don't need that much space. And we'll get rid of, bring that down out of the way. So if first of all we look at what happens when the minus is outside of the bracket. So that is reflecting in the up and down direction. Okay. Now this one is at zero anyway. The x-axis here, this is our mirror. And so everything above goes below. So this point reflects down there. And this high point reflects somewhere down there. Again, try and get it as close as you can. The point that's touching the mirror stays on the mirror. And so we end up something like that. Okay. So if this coordinate originally was 4, 6, this coordinate is 4, minus 6. Okay. Exactly the same place, but below the x-axis, because I've reflected sort of vertically, if you like. Okay. If I want to reflect left and right, this would be a little bit trickier to show. But what, it, what I'm saying now is that this point on the right, which was high, is going to go over to the left, so over here. And this point on the left, which was the lower of the two, that gets switched over to the right. Okay, and zero stays by zero. And so now that's a reflection left to right. Okay, so the blue one has switched left and right, the red one we switched up and down. And it all depends where you put your minus. So this time it's gone over there because my minus was inside the bracket. So inside the bracket is left to right reflecting, outside of the bracket is up and down reflecting. Okay, so that's translation and reflection. We don't do rotation, so the only other one left would be enlargement. Okay, now when it comes to a graph, when we say enlargement, what we mean is either stretching the graph out or squashing the graph. But obviously you can do that in a few different directions. So let's have a look at some stretching and squashing. Okay, so side heading now. This is the last one. This one doesn't come up very often, actually. Most of the time, it's reflection and translation. So up, down, left, right, and then flipping it. You don't often see stretching and squashing in an exam. Okay, so 
If we want to stretch and squash in the y direction, so that's the up and down direction, I need to make a change outside of the brackets. And the change I would make is to put some sort of multiplier in front of the function. So if I put a 2 at the front, it means I'm sort of doubling the height or the depth of the graph. So I'm stretching it vertically. Okay. If I put a half in front, I mean, technically I'm still stretching it, but I'm only stretching it to half of the height it was. So really, I would call that squashing. Okay. I'll show you what I mean on a graph. So here's another blank graph. A lot of cutting and sticking in this lesson or a lot of drawing depends what you're doing so here's my original expression f of x so if i double everything first so thinking like coordinate by coordinate if originally over here on the left i was one high so let's say for instance that's a coordinate of minus three one i'm only doubling the height not the width because we're working in the vertical direction Twice as high as 1 would be 2. So my new coordinate there would be minus 3, 2. On the other side, if originally this was 3, 4, and I'm doubling its height, well, now I'm going to be up here somewhere, and that's going to be 3, 8. Now, what happens in the middle? Well, if this is 0, 0, and you double 0, it's still 0. So that one doesn't move. And what you get is a graph looking like that. Okay. Now, if, without using coordinates, it's very difficult to show that you've doubled because we're still crossing the axis in the same place. And so actually on that one, there isn't really any labelling to do unless they give you a coordinate. Okay. So very often, I mean, I can get rid of these. Very often, all you would need to do on a stretching one is just stretch it in the right direction. Notice as well, the graph didn't get any wider. I haven't done anything in the side-to-side -side direction. All I've done is stretch it upwards. Imagine having a giant rubber band, putting your foot on it, and then lifting your arms up. So the bit under your foot stays still, but you can stretch up the, other, the two sides if you like. Okay, so that would be y equals 2 f, whoops, put the brackets in the wrong place. That would be 2 f of x. I've stretched everything twice as tall. And if it was negative, it would go twice as deep. You can go twice the other way as well. Okay, it's just this graph doesn't go negative. If I want to draw half f of x, well, now every coordinate is only half as tall as it was originally. So this coordinate that was one high on the left over here, well, now it's only a half tall. And this coordinate, and originally I said it was four tall, well, now it's only two tall. And the one which was zero, well, half of zero is zero. So again, that stays still. And what I get is a graph that does something like that. Okay. So compared to the original one in black, this one is only half as tall because my multiplier was a half. Okay, A little bit like when you've got a scale factor of a half and the shape gets smaller. Okay, And that's all happening. So if I sort of say here that that's sort of been squashed in half. Okay, Half as tall or half as deep. Right, what about stretching side to side now then? Okay, so not making the graph taller, making it either wider or narrower. Okay, well to do that, my multiplier needs to go inside the brackets. Remember inside the brackets is all to do with the left and right direction. So probably best... If you just pause the video for a second and get the notes, and then I will just show you with the diagram. 
So first of all, look, look where the two is this time. The two is inside the bracket, so I know it's in the left and right direction. So something's happening in this direction. Okay. Now, again, you would think that if you're multiplying by two, the graph gets wider. But remember I said earlier in the video, when you make changes inside the bracket, it does the opposite to what you would think. So times in by 2 doesn't make it twice as wide, it makes it twice as thin. Or, another way of saying that, half as wide. Okay, So doubling inside the bracket has the opposite effect, it actually divides everything by 2. The graph doesn't get taller, it gets thinner. So if I start on the right hand side, okay, if originally this coordinate was 4 comma 6, the 6 doesn't change, but the 4 does, because now it's only half as wide. So it would be 2, 6. Over here on the left, if originally this was minus 4, 2, the 2 doesn't change, because it's not the height I'm changing, it's the width. Now it's only half as far to the left, so it would be minus 2, 2. Okay? Now in the middle again, it's zero. And if you half zero, you get zero. So this graph is exactly the same height. So this time, imagine your big elastic band that you're standing on. You're holding the two ends, but you're standing on in the middle. This time, your arms aren't going up and down. Your arms are going in and out. And because it says double, double, you don't make your arms wider. You make your arms narrower. So you bring your arms in and your graph is half as wide. So this is y equals f of 2x. Okay, I'll get rid of the coordinates because it looks a bit busy with the coordinates on there as well. Now then, if I want my graph to get wider, I'm still going to make a change inside the bracket. But to make it wider, you've got to do what you think would make it thinner, which is putting a fraction inside there. So if I want the graph to go twice as wide, I would actually put a half inside the bracket. So y equals f of half of x doubles every x-coordinate. In other words, makes the graph twice as wide. Remember, because we're doing opposites when you're inside the bracket. So my original coordinate here, I just colour over it in blue, needs to go twice as far out. So that's over there somewhere now, twice as far away from the y-axis. I'm opening my arms out wider. And this low coordinate down on the left here, I mean, it's going to be a struggle to fit it in. I'll go as far as I can. It needs to go twice as far away. It's not any taller, but it's much further away from the y-axis. I've put my foot and I've opened my arms up. And then this one stays the same. It's going to be tricky to draw. So it's going to come down there, through the same place, and up there. Okay? So it's been pulled outwards now then. And this would be y equals f of a half x. Okay, and that'll probably be enough for today, as long as you've got all of the notes, um, all of the graphs that show how to go up, down, left and right, that was what we did first by adding and taking away, how to flip it, so that was by putting a minus in, okay, a minus outside the bracket flips it up and down, a minus inside the bracket flips it left and right, and then what we've done here at the end, which is stretching and squashing, okay, which is using a sort of a multiplier, if you like. And depending on where you put the multiplier, you could be stretching or squashing up and down, or stretching and squashing left to right.